This program is brought to you by Emory University. In accordance with our laws, the firstborn of each of the great leaders must prove their worth. Merida, stop! A lady enjoys elegant oh. pursuits. I want my freedom. But are you willing to pay the price your freedom will cost? Careful what you wish for, my mother would say. What's the worst that could happen? The premise of Brave is that girls should embrace their independence, but at the same time, the film delivers a stern warning that bad things can happen once girls start acting on that independence, right? And this could be threatening to the family structure, to societal structure, etc. So Merida is faced with the challenge of having suitors who are competing for her hand in marriage. And at the same time, she's an independent girl. She's a free spirit. She doesn't want to get married. She has other goals for herself. And so it's at this moment of the archery tournament, when these suitors are competing for her, um, that she decides she will shoot and compete for her own hand. So Merida does so, and she wins. Right? She wins her own freedom. But at the same time, that's what kind of unlocks this series of events that the film really hinges on. And all of these events, again, bringing in the elements of a fairy tale, have a negative tinge to them. Right? Merida ends up releasing an, or unleashing an ancient curse um, that uh, has the capacity to transform her mother. And it's here that Merida really starts to develop the inner turmoil and trying to figure out how can I both have my independence and preserve my relationship with my mother? Um, and this is really the main conflict in the film, is the mother-daughter relationship. So while Brave is the first film to actually figure a girl protagonist, I actually think there's a more nuanced representation of girlhood in Disney's, Disney Pixar's 2004 film, The Incredibles. And it's here that we have, of course, a family of superheroes, and they all have very gendered superpowers. We have Bob, the dad, whose superhero is his super strength. We have Helen, the mom, who is known as Elastigirl, and it's no, it shouldn't go unnoticed that she is termed an, a girl, even though she's a grown woman and a mother. Um, and also the, the characteristic superpower of elasticity is a very, I couldn't imagine a more feminized superpower. It's kind of, kind of incredible and wonderful in its own way. Um, and then there's of course the younger son, Dash, whose superpower is speed. And then there's Violet, the shrinking Violet. And her superpower is, at first, you know, we learn that she has the capacity to become invisible, right? And she uses this to negotiate her shyness. As the film develops, Violet also develops, and she's learning as an adolescent that she has this capacity to create an impenetrable force field. So this is a relative first in terms of representations of girlhood in animated films, and especially in Pixar films, um, that we have Violet, who again isn't the main protagonist, but is a representation of an empowered girlhood that whose superpowers and whose development towards manifesting and embracing her power is something that eventually helps her family escape. So what I'm seeing in both these Pixar films, Brave and The Incredibles, is that girls are represented as profoundly bound up in their relations to their families. Even with this wonderful representation of Violet in The Incredibles, she's developing again within the space of the family and within the family structure. And this is something that's different in terms of how we see boyhood um, and masculinized characters usually represented. And we have, Pixar offers us wonderful representations of boyhood. We have Finding Nemo, Cars, and all of these films offer us the development of boyhood character outside the domesticized space of the family. And that's something that Pixar has yet to offer us in terms of its representation of girls. So what I'm seeing that's so promising about Pixar films is not so much the films where we have these very explicit um, characters that are very gender conforming, such as in Finding Nemo or Cars or even Brave, where the characters are relatively gender conforming or in The Incredibles um, and do ascribe to gender stereotypes more or less. But then we have these other Pixar films that have gained little 
to no attention uh, in terms of popular culture's attention agenda. And those were films such as Up. What we have in Up is we have this relationship between this little boy and this man and because they visually it seems like of course these are these are two this is a boy and a man right there's no gender problem going on here that anyone needs to pay attention to but at the same time the boy is not a stereotypical boy's boy right this is a boy that yeah he's involved in the scouts for sure but at the same time he's chubby he asks incessant questions right he's kind of annoying he's the tag along he also really desperately wants a relationship and that's something that in terms of representations of boyhood as usually a quest for independence that's something new and that's something that is where I think Pixar is much more pushing the limits of gender and challenging societal assumptions about gender than we get in other films that are ironically given more attention for being um, more progressive in terms of gender such as Brave. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.